G'day guys, welcome to Perth Watch. This is it, the final showdown of the budget Submariner homage tournament. The tournament that followed on from the five watch comparison I published late last year. It has come down to these two watches. So just a quick recap of the semi-finals. The Invicta vs Star King was retconned from a previous comparison that I did and here's a rundown of the scores to the left of screen here. It was taken convincingly by the Invicta Pro Diver. Subsequently, I did a comparison between the Lorio versus the Pagani design. This was published not so long ago. And here is the rundown of the scores of that particular comparison. A little bit of a closer comparison, but taken relatively convincingly by the Pagani design. And so we have these two winners of the semi-finals left today, Invicta Pro Diver versus Pagani Design. Without further ado, let's flip the camera around and get into this final comparison. Okay guys, so here we have the two finalists. So just uh, introducing the contenders here. So on the left side, we have the Invicta Pro Diver, in this case represented by the very popular 89270B. The, you know, I really like uh, the gold two-tone, right? Just a bit of a sucker for this model. So I've used this for many Pro Diver 40 millimeter comparisons. The review was done very long ago. Check that out if you wish to see more details. Uh, on the left side, we have, of course, to Pagani Design Submariner Hulk. I got this Hulk version. This is the PD1639, you know, very well credentialed on paper specs, second to none really. So this is what we have left in introduction. Uh, so we have the well-established Invicta uh, versus the compelling, very new model from Pagani Design available at very similar pricing, both these watches. They both feature Seiko NH35 movements stainless steel casings, 316L steel casings, as far as I can tell, and unidirectional dive bezels, but otherwise they have rather different on paper specifications. MSRP kind of in ignore the Invicta, they kind of list this at over 300, uh, and the Pagani at 110, but the acquisition price effectively the same at around 70 to 75 USD that you can buy even right now. Okay guys, so let's just put the watches down and get into the category comparisons here. Okay, first up, uh, not really comparator here because they both ostensibly have the Seiko NH35A. Uh, the marks are kept the same for the Pagani. I gave it eight on the previous comparison, so I'm gonna give Invicta eight as well. Sometimes I give seven for this movement depending on the comparator. If uh, the Pagani is in fact a fake, uh, or copy Seiko NH35, as some people have found out. Apparently they took it to watchmakers and put it side by side with a real Seiko. It may be a clone. I, I guess I might feel compelled to knock a mark off here, but for the time being, eight out of 10 for both of these. Okay, case and bezel. So the Invicta case finishing, in my opinion, really is very, very good for the price. And the, the, best, the bezel certainly has a better fit and feel than the Pagani. The Pagani does have some play there. And this one is a 120 click bezel, whereas the Pagani uh, is a 90 click bezel. So, and I'll show you, there is a bit of back play here, whereas the Invicta really has hardly any back play. It's really one of the best bezels at the $70 price point that you can find. So the bezel is looser and Pagani and it does have some QC issues, right? There's a bit of imperfection at the triangle there, uh, some, some bleeding of the paint. So hopefully that translates in the camera, but certainly the paint is, has some imperfections there. So certainly uh, I think finishing wise and bezel wise, I have to give the mark to the Invicta here. And I've chosen to give seven out of 10 versus six out of 10 for this particular category. Okay, next up, Dahl and Crystal. So the Invicta has a rather uh, derivative uh, Rolex Submariner uh, type of look, whereas the Bugani, as you see in the pan shots here, right, really quite, you know, really pops a bit with that sunburst. Uh, but at the same time, I think the Pagani hands are somewhat short. You know, the minute hand doesn't quite uh, reach the chapter ring there. So there's a little bit of a falling short there, literally speaking. Yet the Pagani has a much better Cyclops magnifier. So hopefully you can see that on the camera. It's got one of the best third party or I guess homage Cyclops I've seen. It really does pop it at two 
0.5 times. The Invicta is not too bad, but certainly I think the Pagani is better. And the Pagani does have sapphire where the Invicta is kind of their flame fusion mineral crystal. So the mark here, I think, has to go to the Pagani. 7 out of 10 versus 6 out of 10 for Dao and crystal category. Okay, next up uh, is the bracelet or the strap. In this case, metal bracelet for both, of course. I think the Pagani on paper definitely has much better specifications. So you can see the class is not just your standard you know, OEM class. They kind of have come up with their own thing with Pagani design there. It does actually have screw links, which is astounding at this price point to, to feature screw links on the bracelet, uh, as well as solid end links, right? Uh, in comparison, the Invicta is rather generic, right? It's got a rather, you know, uh, very OEM type of looking class, even though uh, it is kind of their own thing with Invicta. It's got uh, push pins for adjustment and it's got hollow end links as well. So definitely in terms of overall specs, the Pagani has it, but I got to say the fit isn't quite there. So that, that end link there, it kind of gets stuck in that position. So the, the actual overall finish and fit isn't quite there, even though the actual brushing is better on the Bacani, in my, in my opinion. Uh, I think that kind of pulls it back a little bit. Uh, so the mark here I've given is 7 out of 10 versus 6 out of 10. If the fit was as good as Invicta, I think it might be tempted to give it a two-point spread, but as it is, it's 7 versus 6. Okay, next up. Overall quality, I think for the price, both are pretty good. I think the Invicta has slightly better case finishing. Uh, it has a definitely better feel and fit of the bezel, whereas the Pagani, the bracelet finishing, ironically, is better than the Invicta, and it definitely has the better Cyclops there. Okay, so let's just uh, you know let you see the case finishing a little bit closer. I think. You know, ironically, the case on one is better than the other, whereas it's vice versa for the bracelet. It's very difficult to appreciate that, I think, in camera, but in hand, side by side comparison, that's really how I found this. So, you know, it kind of evens out overall. I think it's 7 out of 10 uh, for the quality mark for both these watches for me. Next up, style. Okay, this is really, again, the most subjective category. Uh, I think the looks are obviously uh, very much derivative. Uh, you might say stolen from the Submariner. So they kind of have the, those good looks uh, for me. The Invicta is obviously the more classic five-digit Submariner style, 40 millimeter size. The Bugani is a bit of an upsize, right? It's the, the 42 millimeters, and it's more towards the maxi dial with the super case of the modern six digit subs, but you know, I, I'm not going to separate them in terms of the, the style here. I'm going to give them the same mark, 8 out of 10 for me on this particular category. Uh, but let me know if you feel differently in that. Okay, next up, performance. Uh, in this case, I think the Invicta definitely has to uh, be given the mark here. And you know, I say that because it does have the better water resistant rating, that does have the 200 meters for the pro diver. Uh, the, the loom isn't fantastic, but I gotta say it is better than the very poor loom on at least my Pagani design. And it's got the better functional bezel with 120 clicks. Whereas the Pagani, you know, it is, it is actually you know, water resistant. It does have 100 meters, but less than the 200 meters. It's got the poor loom. And as I mentioned, it's got that poor fitting bezel and it's also 90 click as opposed to the more useful 120 click. Okay, so I think I have to give the performance mark here to the Invicta. It's eight versus seven for this category for me. Okay, next up, durability. Okay, so here is where the Pagani really comes into its own because thus far, no other watch gives these specs for the price, right? It's giving you a sapphire crystal, it's giving you a ceramic bezel insert. It's a larger case and definitely a more solid bracelet with those solid end links, I have to give the durability mark. No doubt at all in my mind, the Pagani takes it and I'm giving a two point spread in this particular category, eight versus six on durability here. I don't think it's too controversial to say the Pagani definitely takes a victory. Uh, let me know if you would have given different marks in terms of the spread. Okay, next up, nearly there guys, value. Invicta, Pretty darn good. It's got the NH35 movement and the quality that you get is pretty darn good for $70. But really, you know, as with the L'Oreal comparison, the Pagani has to be 10 out of 10 with the astounding specifications that it gives you. No other watch I know 
gives all the specs that it gives you for $70 to $75. It is 10 out of 10 for the Pagani. 9 out of 10 for Invicta, it's no slouch, but really the Pagani is the outstanding watch in this category here. All right, last one, brand. Okay, slightly controversial. Look, I think Invicta has its issues, right? You know, the pricing MSRP listings are ridiculous, way too many models, but definitely a much more established brand name, right? They've been around for 100 years or more, certainly not the same as it was as it started, but the name has been there and it's a well-established brand with multiple international boutiques. Bagani, on the other hand, is a newer brand. It's pretty opaque, exactly who they are, but I gotta say, so far, they are offering pretty good pieces with compelling value for money. So I'm giving it six versus seven here. Okay guys, so what's the summary? I think you get the feel if you've been adding up. It is a slight victory for the Bagani design. Certainly a close battle without question. So in summary, very close. They have tie marks in the caliber quality and style categories. Uh, the Invicta, in my opinion, has the better case and bezel uh, overall. Uh, performance characteristics, definitely it takes the mark, as well as the brand. I've given it the edge there on the brand mark, but I gotta say the Pagani design takes it with categorical wins in Dahlen Crystal, bracelet, durability, and value departments. So this is our winner. Okay guys, that's our comparison. Let's flip the camera around for the wrap up now. So there you go guys, my final comparison of Invicta versus Pagani. A Pagani design takes it all, but it was by no means a complete whitewash with Invicta taking victory in a number of categories, particularly with regards to fit and feel of the watch. But overall, I had to give the victory to the Pagani being as objective as I possibly can. Guys, as always, let me know your thoughts. Very interested to hear your input on this particular comparison and the tournament that we ran. Hopefully you feel that my scores were kind of reflective of what you would feel, but look, I'm always open to hear what other perspectives that people have. Um, the other thought I had in mind was that, you know, there is a question about Lorio versus Invicta, whether it was definitive that Invicta is a second place. I may yet do a second place shootout between the Pro Diver and the Lorio Submariner, so keep your eye out for that. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys next time.